Padding my Corinthian helmet. Hi, Thack from Thack Ironworks. Welcome back. Um, in this video, the third one on this uh, Corinthian helmet here, I'm just doing a liner in it to make this thing wearable. Um, I had a lot of feedback on my uh, YouTube page about asking about helmet linings and stuff like that. And I thought, well, I need to get this one lined. I will get that done and show you what that looks like. Um, there's a bunch of different ways you can go about it. Traditionally, from uh, the research that I've done, um, these were lined with felt, um, which was glued in padding, and that would look something like this helmet here, and I have no idea if, Eric, if you're able to see inside there. So this is the way I used to just line helmets if they needed to be worn for photo shoots or whatever. Um, even when I used to do combat fighting, we used to um, just glue in this closed cell um, foam in order to create padding on, a, to level it out on your head that it was at the appropriate height and centered. Um, not really a complicated process. And I don't know if you can see there, this, these are actually just taped in, duct taped in, so that they can be pulled out and removed and something like that. So traditionally, they would have glued um, this sort of thing in, or they would have made an arming cap that would have been laced through or riveted in in some fashion in order to do that. I grab my Roman Coolis here. This one I did a more elaborate job in that I actually did leather and it's got some sort of foam underneath there and that whole thing is glued in. So it actually looks a little prettier when you look on the inside there, but really performs the same thing. So that is padded so it fits onto my head. And there we go, the coolest, probably the coolest of the Roman helmets. Sorry. Moving on. Now with my Corinthian helmet, I decided to go a different route. Not historically accurate, once again, I always have to give that caveat. But what I decided I'm going to do is make a leather harness that basically sits off the head, very much like the inside of a hard hat. If you go uh, on construction sites and stuff like that, the hard hat has that little um, harness inside that the helmet floats over top of. Um, so that is what I'm going to do. I've already gone ahead and, and made my template here. Um, you can look back in other videos on how I go about templating. It's not rocket surgery, people. Basically, you're just basically taking a piece of cardboard and fitting it on your head, figuring out where the measurements need to be. And I made this so that it can lace together at the top, come together like that, fit on my head, and then fit inside of the helmet. So. Not complicated, but does take a little bit of time and it's fiddly. So once we've got that, now I'm going to actually lace this together and get ready to install it inside the helmet. So let's do that. Okay, so I've got my piece made and fits onto my head. It's comfortable enough. It's, I would say snug, but not too snug. It just kind of fits on there. Um, and now these little wings here with the holes are going to be riveted to the side of the helmet. And that should suspend this thing off my head. So let's get into it. Okay, so I'm ready to put this in here. I'm also putting in a little D-ring tab here, um, which will help lace the helmet to my head, tie it in to hold it in place there. So I'm putting that in as we go. So this is going to be a little awkward. Okay, I wanna get it seated on the ball there. See if my end nippers will nip this. Take it down to about 3 16 long. And I'm coming in with the ball. Keeping with 
with the rest of the helmet, I'm just doing hammer texture on there, and this thing is all about the texture. Okay, that's rivet number one. That one worked nicely. I'm going to go to the opposite side now and put in my other D-ring. I did not show you guys the previous steps where I had this thing and guesstimated where the holes went, drilled them, and then bolted the holding in place, which was about, I don't know, a 45 minute process, but I don't think um, you watching it really had any value. You're just going to have to experience it if this is what you're doing. Um, what you're trying to end up with is that the webbing floats about an inch uh, below the inside of the dome of the helmet so that this thing is actually floating on your head. And that should also correspond with where your eyeballs meet the eye holes of the helmet. Damn it. Okay, that's two sides. We'll now move to the back. Back ones are a bit of an awkward placement in here behind the crest and if I'll be able to get my ball there to grab them. Okay, so I'm putting in this um, string here, which is what's going to tie the helmet into place. So I'm fastening that in, just a little easier to do it as I rivet this piece in. All right, moment of truth to do the front. All right, moment of truth. This type of liner is easily enough replaced. You can grind away the rivet heads from the inside, pull this whole thing out and re-mount um, it. Um, it also, because it's just laced together, it's fairly versatile. You can do a lot of adjusting and stuff on it. Let us see, if we will bring the camera up to me face, if this thing fits. And get my ears out of the way. Okay, there it is. So I would lace this under here. I might do something slightly different with this rather than having a big funky bow on the bottom there, but I've got that in place now. My eye holes are right there, right in the middle of my eyes. Everything seems, from the inside here, seems symmetrical. I'm not sure how it's looking from the outside. I should also point out that I, since the last video, added a brass liner on the inside of the eye holes. I felt that they were oversized, even though they were historically accurate at that size. I just didn't like the shape of them. Um, and then on a face, I didn't like your seeing too much of the face, so I wanted it to be a little bit more discreet that way. So I narrowed down the eye openings, and I'm probably going to file these out a little bit bigger yet. This thing is a work in progress, but I like the aspect a little bit better. Let me know what you think. Uh, I'm not sure how my voice is coming through here. And uh, yeah, so you can see it stays on my head and moves with me. I don't have it totally tight down in here yet there, but... I can bend forward and back and it stays um, in place, so I'm pretty happy with that. This thing's a little top heavy with this giant crest. Good. There we have it. All right, since the uh, putting the uh, strapping inside the helmet there to make it wearable was not a really big video, I thought I would give you guys a little teaser of all the components that I have made thus far for this Greek Hoplite outfit. So this is the first time you're seeing them all together. This is the first time I've actually had them all assembled together. So, uh, the next piece is the sword. That will be happening, um, well, chronologically in my time here. About a week from now, we're going to start filming the making of the sword. Then we have the spear, and then I have some undergarments to create and manufacture. And that should complete this suit. We're in the last few months. Thank you so much for your patience on this one. I know this has taken a couple years. It started about two years ago, two and a half years ago with this shield here. So um, 
moving forward, almost there. Hang with me, guys. Um, I appreciate your support. I love the comments, so uh, keep them coming. Uh, please subscribe, uh, hit the notification bell, uh, thumbs up, all that stuff. I will see you very soon in the next video. That's it. Back out. See ya!